All right, folks, so in this video, we're going to be testing a couple of tri-band antennas, one from uh, Brie and one from Nagoya. And uh, they've been sitting around the shack for a while, uh, way back when Radio Oddity sent me this uh, UV82X3. Um, it's a tri-band HT. I bought these antennas, but I just never got around to playing with them or testing them. And uh, last couple days, I did get around to that. So let's just take a quick look at these. Um, <clears throat> the antennas don't look so good in this picture because of the green screen, and it's kind of making them transparent. But uh, we'll get some better looks at these and some close-ups on them and see how they perform. We're going to do a variety of tests, so uh, I'd like you guys to watch. Uh, anything that I get incorrect or wrong, go ahead and put a comment below. Any questions, put a comment below. I'd really appreciate it. If you like this video, go ahead and click the thumbs up, subscribe, share it on social media. Um, it'll help other people find the content. It helps me out a little bit, too. Anyhow, that being said, let's uh, go ahead and get this video started. So here we have both antennas in their original packaging. I'll include links to these antennas below. The Abri doesn't have a name or a model number associated with it. It just has the frequencies that it is resonant for on the packaging. You can see the Velcro for holding the antenna when it's bent over, and you can see the coil at the bottom that you attach to your radio and then the antenna to the coil. Both of these antennas come with an SMA female connector. Now the Nagoya is the NA320A, and you can see it has a SMA female connector. And it includes a rubber grommet, so does the Abri, in case there's a gap or some trouble mounting onto your HT. All right, let's see what we're gonna use in this video to test these antennas out. I've used this in a lot of videos, the Nisei RS40 SWR power meter. We're going to use a Nano VNA that I put into a 3D printed case. And then we're going to play around with this RTL SDR uh, radio. We're also going to use this Baofeng UV82X3 that was sent to me from Radio Oddity. Attaching and removing the coil from the Abri antenna is quite easy. You could leave the coil mounted to your radio and then just take the top part off if you were going to put this into a bag or a backpack or something. Or you could fold it over using the uh, supplied Velcro. Looking at the two antennas side by side, you can see that the Abri is about an inch or two longer. The Nagoya is, however, longer than the 771, which is a popular antenna. Here you can see the marking on the antenna. And the Abri attaches just fine to the Baofeng. Um, that was something that I was a little bit concerned about, given that ring on the Baofeng. But it attaches, and it seems to work without an issue. Okay, let's head on over to the Amazon store, where you can see the prices and some specs on these antennas. So here is the authentic Nagoya. Um, it's $19.98, free shipping. And a couple things to pay attention to. It does give some DBI uh, gain ratings, but that's over an isotropic radiator. And to me, it doesn't mean a whole heck of a lot. But it does uh, reiterate that it is an SMA female connector. And uh, it does talk a little bit about what it will and won't fit on. Taking a look at the Abri side, um, you can actually see that this antenna is cheaper. It's $12.99 uh, plus $3.15 shipping. Uh, it does give a gain of 3 dBi, and then it also lists radios that it will and will not fit on, also noting that it has the SMA female connector. Okay, and here we're set up for our first round of tests, and we are going to be testing the Abri antenna first. So we're connected to the Nisei RS40. We're going to turn this on and we're going to use the calling frequencies for um, 2 meter, 1.25, and 70 centimeter. Hopefully you can see everything here okay. We're going to start this test on the 2 meter band. And when I do this and I key up, uh, it looks to me like we're getting around 1.3 is what I'm going to mark that down as. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to jump over to the 1.25 meter band. 1, 2, 2, 3, 500. Three, five, zero, zero. And then we're going to key it up. And that looks a little bit over 1 at around a 1.5. 
I'm going to write that down, and then we're going to jump up to 446.0. So we can test the 70 centimeter band. And I uh, notice I'm picking up some inner mod there. And when I key up, it's around a 1.5 to 1.6. And in case you couldn't hear me over the inner mod, it was a 1.5 to 1.6. Let's go ahead and put on the Nagoya antenna. And we're set up and we're ready to go with the Nagoya. Let me see if I can get my zoom and my focus right. We're going to start off with the 2 meter band and we get around a 1.9. I already don't like where this is going. Uh, I'm a big fan of Nagoya antennas so I'm really rooting for this one. Next we're going to drop down to the 1.25 um, meter band. And we're getting around a 1.5 to 1.6. And let's go up to the 70 centimeter band and see what we get. Four, four, six, zero, zero, zero. And we get a whopping three. I wanted to double check that because I couldn't believe my eyes. All right, well, let's go to the overall results and see what we got. All right, here are our overall results, and uh, some people might say that RS-40 is a terrible meter, it's no good, you had too many adapters on there. Well, the meters and the adapters would have affected both antennas equally. So while I recognize the RS-40 is not NIST calibrated equipment, I think it's good enough for this test to give us some indicators. And when I take a look at these indicators, the first round definitely goes to the Abri antenna. Um, it performed better at each one of those bands. Now, what I wanted to do, uh, some people say, well, these are specific frequencies on the band. We're actually going to sweep the entire bands using the Nano VNA. And uh, I have that connected to my Windows 10 PC, and we're using a piece of software called Nano VNA Saver. And uh, that will allow us to do full band sweeps and will allow us to sweep all three bands at the same time to get some kind of makeup or idea as to how these antennas perform against each other. So let's go ahead and get right into that. We're going to start off with the Abri antenna. Here we are in Nano VNA Saver, and we have the Abri antenna attached, and we did a sweep that includes the 2 meter, 1.25, and 70 centimeter bands. Up here you can see my sweep settings. We started out on 140 megahertz, and we ended at 455 megahertz. I added three markers, each one at the calling frequencies that we tested with the RS-40 meter. And then you can see the specific uh, specifications. I guess a specific specifications is redundant for each one of those values. <clears throat> the bands are highlighted in gray in the chart in the upper right hand corner. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go down to my sweep settings and I'm going to change it specifically to sweep just the two meter band. And I'm going to add a 25% buffer on either end of that band just so we can see the format of the sweep. We're going to go ahead and we're going to run this and then you can see that the Abri performs pretty well um, and on the Smith chart, it's a little inductive on the 2 meter band, but uh, we are under, um, looks like about a 1.3 across the entire, entire band. Let's go ahead and run the same thing for the 1.25 meter band, which by the way, I had to add to the band plan in this software. Also, the software did have the frequencies incorrect on some of the bands, as it wasn't set up for ITU2. And here are the results for the sweep of the 1.25 meter band. And uh, again, the Abri is looking pretty good here. You shouldn't have any issues using this antenna. Now, one thing I will say is, is that the way this configuration is, is that my antenna is mounted to the end of about 20 to 25 feet of coaxial cable and doesn't have the same issues or challenges that you would have or maybe benefits of using this directly on a handheld like the uh, RS-40 configuration where we tested. So now we're doing a sweep of 70 centimeters. And uh, you can see that this is probably the worst band for this antenna. We saw that on the RS-40. But again, it's pretty good. Um, I don't see anything here that would uh, give me any concerns using this antenna across the entire 70 centimeter band. Let's go over and take a look and see how the Nagoya does. But round two is looking pretty good for a Brie right now. Now we're hooked up to the Nagoya antenna. And we ran the same sweep that we ran before across all three bands. 
and uh, you can see the results on the table in the upper right hand corner. Uh, I did use the same markers as we used on the Abri test at the same frequencies that we did on the RS40 test. And then here you can see the results for that. If you want, you can stop or pause the video here, and then you'd be able to take a more in-depth investigation uh, on the results. Like we did for the Abri, we are going to go through and we're going to sweep each band uh, individually. And here we are at the 2 meter uh, band and as you can see on the lower portions of that band the SWR does get a little high um, <clears throat> I Generally don't like to operate an SWR above two. So to me, that's a, a little concerning Let's go down and run this for the 1.25 or the uh, 220 band And we go ahead and we run that and again at the uh, calling frequency we are uh, above uh, 2.0 uh, 2 and we're above 2.0 for most of the band. So again, I got to tell you, I'm not really a big fan of using this antenna on uh, the 1.25 band. And <clears throat> maybe this is influenced by some um, of the external conditions that we have going on right here, but uh, maybe not. So I've added the results from the Nano VNA to this chart. And you can see again, the Abri uh, outperformed by what I would consider a considerable margin, uh, the Nagoya antenna. Also, you can see that there is a delta between the measurements while close between the RS-40 and the Nano VNA. I did want to mention again that there is some feed line in the setup that I use for the Nano VNA that may introduce line loss in some capacity, which could have caused uh, the readings to be a little bit different, or they're just different meters and they had a little bit of a different configuration. One was pushing uh, the signal with the Belfang radio and the other was pushing it with the Nano VNA. Uh, we had some connectors uh, in play as well. Anyhow, let's take a look at the side-by-side -side comparison chart from Nano VNA. So this is uh, output from the Nano VNA uh, Saver software program, and it's where we swept uh, all three bands, the 2 meter, 1.25, and 70 centimeter. And the blue line is for the Nagoya antenna, and the red line is for the Abri antenna. And as I mentioned on the previous chart, the Abri antenna does appear to have a significant advantage over the Nagoya antenna. Uh, I was really hoping that the Nagoya antenna was going to be uh, performing well at this point, but it's not. And uh, it's easy to say, see or easy to say that Abri is definitely winning the shootout so far. All right, let's do some, uh, some range testing and let's see how they sound on the air. So here we have uh, SDR Sharp and the RTL SDR dongle from RTL SDR blog connected to our SDR. One of the things I want to point out before we get this started is I'm using an Edfong roll-up J-pole antenna connected to this SDR, which is resonant on 2 meter and 70 centimeter bands. It does pick up signals or frequencies outside those bands, but it always doesn't do it well. Anyhow, let's see what we have right here. And that didn't sound good. And I don't know if that is a result of the Balfang radio that I'm using or if that is a result of the um, the SDR, SDR software configuration and the J-Pole antenna. Okay, now we are going to test on the Nagoya antenna. Testing one, two. Testing one, two. Testing with the Nagoya antenna. And I'm not sure that uh, there's too big of a difference there. So this is obviously going to require further tests. Here we are doing a receive test at about a kilometer away. I'm going to start off with the Nagoya antenna and what we are going to do is use the Waxon KGUV8E to do the transmission or broadcasting. And we're going to see how each one of these antennas uh, receives. Testing one, two, testing one, two. And that doesn't sound too bad. Let's go ahead and switch antennas. And now we have the Abri antenna hooked up and let's see how it does. Testing one, two, testing one, two. And again, that's not too bad. 
So what we're going to do now is that we are going to receive on the Waxen or the Ocean or Oshang, depending upon where you're from, radio. <clears throat> and we are going to transmit from the Nagoya first, and then we are going to transmit from the Yabri, and then that's going to finish up this portion of the test. Testing one, two. Testing one, two. And that sounds fine to me. I don't uh, have any issues with that. Testing one, two. Testing one, two. I do think on the transmission, uh, the receiving here on the Woshing uh, does sound a little better coming from the Abri antenna. I'm going to have to say, based off the testing that we did here over the last couple days, that the Abri is the hands down winner. It's a little bit of a bigger antenna, it's a little bit goofy, and it's a little bit unwieldy. But um, if I was going to buy an antenna for a tri-band HT, it uh, definitely would be the Abri, and uh, it, it's going to be the one that I recommend. I always thought that these antennas were a little gimmicky and uh, generally shied away from them. But uh, today, uh, based off all these results, I'm quite impressed. <clears throat> now, it's important to remember that this antenna has an SMA uh, female connector, or SMAF. I could not find one with an SAMM, uh, a male connector. And so I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do with the uh, Ocean Oshang radio. Um, I'd like to get an upgraded antenna for that. Uh, unfortunately for me, neither one of these antennas will fit cleanly. And so I'll be looking at some sort of adapter situation should I choose to move away from the stock uh, antenna there. Anyhow, I do want to say thanks for watching, everybody. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below, and I'll do my best to get back to you. Um, thanks again for watching.